Hi, on the woodpecker today, I'm making two wooden joysticks for my Amiga emulator at the cottage. From the moment I started using Raspberry Pis at the cottage, I fell in love with these mini computers. I already have five and I will add even more. I'm working on another charging surveillance system here. Because I'm nostalgic for the old days, I've also used one for an Amiga emulator. This brings me back 25 years. Uh, but I don't have joysticks to go with my emulator. So I bought this joystick kit. It needs to be assembled and put inside a box. It's perfect. I love making boxes. The first thing I do is place the joystick and the buttons on a sheet of paper just to see how this would work. I think 135 millimeters will be perfect. To test this, I cut a piece of masonite 135 millimeters square. Mark where to drill the holes and drill them. But when I try this, I can see it doesn't work. So after three tries, it's perfect at 140 millimeters square. Now I can begin working on the actual boxes. And for this, I'm going to use some of the oddly shaped plywood that's taking up space in my shop. And on top of it, I like the look of the last boxes I made with plywood. The first thing to do is to cut the first piece. I use a pattern I've drilled to trace the shape I need to remove. When it's done, I drill the corners. Then remove the waste. I redo mostly the same thing for the remaining three layers. But the last one doesn't have big holes, just a small one for the scroll saw blade. Here are the four layers of my first box. All I need to do is glue this together now. One box is drying. I need to make another. <laughs> Done. While the glue dries, I can take care of the tops. I use the pattern I've made to find the holes placements and drill them. All done. But uh, in some places, there's still too much wood. Some buttons don't fit. I fix this right now. Then I can glue both tops in place. Now I just need to wait for all this glue to dry. The next morning, I fix the back cover in place. And sand all the sides flush. The joystick has a big plastic washer, so I need to make space for it. With this shallow hole, it's now flush. But I can see, meh, there's no space for the PCB. I trace what I have to remove and remove some wood with a flush trim bit.
This way, I'm sure not to damage the wood of the back layer. But I also need to make space on the cover as well. So with the same bit, I remove more wood. When I'm done, I redo the same thing on the other back. Okay, uh, not really the same thing. This water is not the greatest, and the bit dropped down during the cut. As you can see, I've ruined the piece. So I need to remove this layer altogether now, and redo it. But this time, I'm lucky, and the router doesn't move on me. I also want two more holes. To make this look less blocky, I remove all the corners. Then I can finalize the exterior. But I still need to do something so the wire can go out of the box. With this, the boxes are completed. I just need to spray some finish on them. When the last coat is dry, it's possible to install the buttons. The joystick is glued on with hot glue. I hold it in place while the glue cools down. Then it's possible to hook up all the wires. There are a lot, so it's not that fast. Here is what the inside looks like with the PCB and wires. <sighs> but it's only then that I notice that this is rubbing on the cover. I need to make some modifications. All done. It's working great now. It's only missing the final touches. But I'm not done. I still have a second one to assemble. And with those two joysticks, we will be able to play some 25 year old video games. This was my nostalgic episode on the old Amiga. So if, like me, you have the weird idea to play old video games, you now know how to make your own joystick out of weird pieces of plywood. And see you soon for another episode of The Woodpecker. Three, two,